for me, it's easier because when I'm doing clients, sure. I'm doing hair and we're always talking. Yeah. It's like, you know, you always get a therapy session. <laughs> That's my next job. I'm sure of it. So it's really always been about that. It's so, you know, it's the way people feel about their hair and how it expresses them. And like, um, it's just always been about that for me. Maria McCool, 55. I don't really have the greatest hair, to be honest. I've always thought your haircut is so cute. Oh, well, thanks. I love it. I appreciate that. <laughs> Why is hairstyling your thing? Like, what uh, is it about it that you love? It's a long story, Jenna. <laughs> it is a long story, but I, um, I don't know. I had an affinity to it. it. Was literally cutting my doll's hair since I've been since I was like ten, and then I had the opportunity to cut and perm my best friend's hair when we were twelve. It wasn't an opportunity. We just took the opportunity, and um, she. We were going to a party. She was. Her parents were getting divorced. She was kind of sad and she wasn't going to go to this girl, like boy girl party. So I'm like, we'll do your hair. It'll be fine. You'll be great. And I did it. And when we went to the party, she was like this bell of the ball. Like everybody was like all over Mary. And I literally from that moment, I was just like, I don't know. I felt so good about it. And I knew I would do it forever. Walk over to her. Maria McCool, who is an award-winning stylist, a master stylist. She is the owner of Callista Grand here, a salon here in the Westchester, Pennsylvania area that is number four when it comes to the best salons in the United States. She does most of the hair of us host here at QVC. She's a good friend of mine. And she created this product, the original Perfector, because right. women wanted a solution to look like how you made them. Very genius. Thank so you. So this is Maria McCool. She owns a very prestigious salon in the Philadelphia area and she develops all these tools based on what her clients need and what we tell her we'd like. I've actually been working with women for 30 years. I've been doing it forever. That's cool. Nah. It's such a huge part of your identity. It really is, right? Do you get a consistent like one question from your clients who are over 40? Like is there something that people always ask you about? I mean they do always say like well now that I'm 40 how should I be wearing my hair? Really? Yeah. Yeah. As if like there's this rule that we're supposed to cut our hair at a certain age. I hear a lot of like, should they go gray? Should they let it be gray? Or should they color it? Like that's a big question in the 40s because you're starting to gray. Should I go gray? And then it's like, how about if they want to go gray? They're not gray yet. What do you but, tell people? Um, so when it comes to going gray, um, I do tell people first and foremost, like, you definitely, um, it can be aging because that's usually the second question. Like, am I going to look older? You always ask that. And I always tell them, you know, especially if they're in their forties, you know, when you see a woman or a man that has white, a lot of white hair, you automatically are putting kind of an age group to it. I do a great consult all the time <laughs> because it's a thing, right? I like to look at um, the texture of their hair and like how that's going to be um, and, you know, where their gray's placed. So, for instance, my hair's gray is placed in a streak right here and then it kind of spatters through there and then there's some more streaks back here. I don't have much gray at all right here right now for my age, for 55. Um, I don't have too much gray. So for me, um, because of my skin color, like the depth does look good on me. So I'm able to keep that some, but then keep the white streak. So some people only are really gray right here. So then we have to look at how's that looking with the style or your face. And with my gray not being so close to my face, I still have a lot of color. Um, if this was all white, I'd have to make sure that the color looks good on my client's skin. Once you get to the point where you're 40% hmm, gray, that means out of 100 hairs, 40 of them are gray, my clients start to struggle, right? Because now it's like, they'll be like, I just got it colored in two weeks and now I'm already seeing gray pop around my face. So that's kind of like 
that becomes the issue, right? Because they don't want to be in the salon every two weeks, coloring their hair. For me right now with my gray and the way I've done my color, I can go like six to eight weeks without getting color. Um, but if I, when I was coloring it all over, I would have had to go like three to four weeks because the this area would get show up so quick. And my biggest suggestion is generally, you know, when you really get sick of that, like, oh, every two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, I'm like having that line, then it's time to incorporate the gray somewhere. Like I've incorporated it in my streak, like, because then what happens, it's not so foreign. Like it's kind of a really creative way. I love working with my clients in their gray hair. It's like a super challenge for me, it's fun. Even if it's a lighter shade, there's a lot of people who say that and then I start to make them blonde in an area where all the gray is, a little bit more blonding so that the root isn't like dark with white. So I do do that a lot too. My situation, it would be like, if this was all white, right? If I was all white and I was still coloring my hair, but I wanted to go, I would color this here, um, just this to this. This would be the part that would get colored. And I'd let everything else start growing out. It works every time. <laughs> And then I feel like another thing that is an issue is, is keeping your hair healthy, like so it doesn't get crispy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if people realize what's happening is that, you know, our hair, it's hormonal and it's genetic, both things, both color and the oil glands, they kind of go hand in hand. So that's why our gray starts getting wiry because we are not really creating the sebaceous oils that we need to coat our hair and keep it healthy. Um, so believe it or not, as you get older, you probably should be using completely different products than you were ever using on your hair. Um, you know, obviously I created a shampoo purposefully for what we're talking about juice, um, because it has the ingredients that you need, um, you know, to replace the right moisturization in your hair. That is part of my next question is like, are there products you recommend or ingredients? You've got to choose really moisturizing products. We're always looking at ourselves like, you know, we want cream to get rid of the wrinkles, right? And we want to get rid of these lines. And, you know, when our hair kind of looks coarse and dry, it ages us as much as any of those do. So I have a lot of clients struggling. Their hair just looks pretty parched. It's products, it's all products. And when you asked about ingredients, it's interesting because I know that people think that we just jack prices up on professional products, but it's really the ingredients. So if you're wearing a cashmere sweater, it's a different cost than a different type of uh, wool, right? Or whatever. That's the way, that's the way it is in the industry that ingredients, salt palmetto, willow herb, um, argons in the product, like they're not inexpensive ingredients. It's, it's the product. It's the heat styling tool activating the products and letting me have more soft hair, not, I mean, for being 55, it's not coarse and crunchy like you were talking about. I mean, I think just from the start of this to now, my hair looks 10 years younger. <laughs> um, I'm going to switch and I'm going to go for a little more curl with the smaller size. Um, but I let it dry naturally so that I wasn't putting... Because heat, heat is, you know, it can be, obviously it's going to take the moisture out of your hair, right? Heat's always going to take moisture out of your hair. So what I love about um, the faux glow, which I'm using right now, is because I just let my hair dry by itself. It's not like I'm against blow drying at all, but a lot of times I'll use my style dryer, the blow dryer, because it's a style dryer, so I don't have to use a heat styling tool after that. So if my hair was wet, um, you know, I can do that too. So there's just like a lot of, options with styling tools and you really want to start making really smart options because because I know that every time I stroke through like I just get more shine so even if I just brush through it I actually learned it from my daughter because all of our tools have fusion technology and one day she was using I kept finding the perfecter my perfecter in her bathroom <laughs> like every time I went to get ready I'm like where's but she was in high school and like, but her hair was still straight. Like it was never like styled or anything. And I'm like, why is it, why is the perfect, like why, what are you doing with it? You, and she's like, oh, I just brushed my hair. 
So literally, and I was like, well, that's an aha moment because she, you know, gets a little bit fuzzy or frizzy. And so her hair is long and it's just the same as this, like my hair in the back, even if I don't want to change it, if I just stroke this through a couple times, softly like that, just really stroke it through this part that's kind of fuzzy, it just, yeah, see how it's just shinier and smoother. And you don't have to have eyes in the back of your head to do it. What if someone is like, I've had pretty much the same hairstyle my whole life, but how do I update it to like be modern? Yeah. What's really dictating the style is where the bang is laying, where the layers are laying, if there's layers. Um, and so that's what I find the most with my clients. Cause right now I could have a client that would come in that have this all layers and she wants to update her hair. So I'm going to talk her into somewhere where it could be comfortable. We need to grow some layers in. I used to kid around all the time because I always knew when somebody was like super popular in high school because they were wearing the same style. <laughs> So that was probably when I was younger and I didn't have as much um, courage at, you know, 25 to tell a 55 year old woman that, whereas now I kind of just walk them through the process. Like I walk them through and you know what? I find that every one of them is interested. There's very rarely do I, you know, when I tell somebody, well, would you like me to take your style and bring it a little bit more modern? And I just explain to them and I've never had somebody say, no, just let it look old and dated. Let's keep it this way. <laughs> Ultimately, if somebody walks out of my chair and feels like a million bucks, um, I do think that that's most important. I, I realized very early on, like some of the most beautiful women that I were clients didn't feel good about themselves. And some women that, you know, on a worldly scale, maybe not be the most attractive person maybe, but they were the most stunning person in the, you know, in the salon because the way they carried themselves and the way they felt about their look. And so I think that kind of taught me like, it's okay if somebody, you know, it's not my job to tell people what they have to wear. I have very baby fine hair, but then sometimes I need a little more umph so that my hair stays all day. So I'm actually gonna use the cloud powder. It's almost like what you were talking about modern day, like it's really not modern to teach your hair anymore. Nothing about it really works. Like if I were to tease this section right now, like first of all, I'm older, so we're just fuzzing it out, right? Like what, what? So, and so then if even if I move it around a little bit so it doesn't look so fuzzy, it still looks fuzzy, but it also now looks solid, doesn't move. I'm just gonna brush that out. But, at the same time, maybe I don't want my hair, like, cause my hair's fine. Like this looks cute, but like in an hour it could be really collapsed. So I'm just gonna section out and this is the cloud powder. I'm just gonna poof it in. So all I have to do is just, I'm just gonna kind of get it through the roots. I'm just trying to get a little bit more thickness to it. So it literally, ooh, I can even feel it right now. See when I put my hands into it, it does the same thing that the tease just did. But you notice how like now my hair moves. But if I was doing, you know, maybe I was going on air or something like that, I would finish this style off with the air shape. And the reason being is like, I'm going for more of this just light look. And this is a definitely, this is a spray that gives you great hold, but you can't see it. You don't feel it hardly. Um, and so I would go with that kind of spray. And as far as spraying goes, no matter what spray you're using, um, if you noticed, I'm always coming up. So I always go into the style. I don't ever go on top of the style. The, the reason why our styles collapse is because of the underneath, not the top. So I always just pick up and spray in there. Plus, if you're somebody who doesn't like product, like you don't want it to feel, you don't want to see it, yeah. but you have baby fine hair, you want it to be thicker, or you know, mine lays down like cat hair. So I'm going to go in there and give myself I'm actually gonna get that. I know where this calic part, where it's really thin. Just make sure I have enough in there. So I have that in there. And then if I wake up tomorrow and I don't wanna shampoo it, you wanna brush through it again. Make sure you brush all your product out. And then, you'll just start it right over with your tool. <laughs> 
I was telling you off camera, I didn't cover my roots today because I thought I might get a chance to try out the powder. Embellish root touch up. This really did actually get born out of the pandemic, believe it or not, because my clients were crazy about their roots coming in. And um, so we literally took our fiber technology that's been, uh, it's what I launched on QVC when I first came 10 years ago was embellish. embellish. So um, the fiber part, which is so great, adheres to the hair and really thicks it up. It's very similar to what we've been doing, you know, to get some volume. Um, and it's got this great flow through. And I'm actually, so you know, even though my hair is, um, we got a lot of product in there now, but um, you know, I'm working with the gray this way, but I'm just gonna show you how quickly I'm gonna use a medium brown shade. And super, super easy, because all you're gonna do is tap. You can cover up like my scalp over here with aging and thinning, like, you know, it's kind of like, it's that part is getting bigger. It, so and would it work up there if you're thinning? Like, Yeah, it's awesome oh. for thinning. So I'm literally, I'm using medium brown, remember, so it's gonna take this gray away. And I'm just, you just tap and you blend. And it goes through that great pass-through sponge, the flow-through sponge, basically. Tapping and blending. So I'm, what I'm doing right now, if you notice, I'm giving myself just like a, more of a, um, it's like a color melt, we call it, where you melt the richness at the root and kind of blend that out. Now, this is the big key. So if I was gonna wear my hair back, all that thinning area, oh. right? Just get rid of that too. So you just tap and you blend. And then get all in there to make that part of my hair look thicker. Versus the thin. It's crazy, I'll get rid of that too. <laughs> so it's just a tap and it's a blend. I can completely, if I wanted to change this whole streak of mine, can completely use this medium brown shade to make my highlight, no. right? So it's so natural. Um, obviously, if you, know, you have white roots, you just get rid of that. If you have that spot back here that's always thin. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, isn't that great? So what colors do you have? So right now we have it in six colors. Starts with salt and pepper, so that's great for, um, you know, if you're thinning, it's great for guys too, with all that thin they have there. I have uh, somebody that is using this religiously now, that's a gentleman. <laughs> and um, then we go to blonde. So we have a blonde, we have a light brown, we have a medium brown that I used on me, then a darker brown, and then a black. So the same three questions I ask everyone. Okay. What was the last makeup tutorial you watched? The last one I watched was um, putting the eyeliner, cat eyeliner on aging eyes. I watched that one a lot too. What's the most used product in your makeup kit? Most used product yeah. in my makeup routine is thermal spray. What makeup thing did you learn from a woman in your life? Mm, my mom, who didn't really wear makeup and didn't do her hair, she was not a girly girl at all, but she always had a powder and a lipstick. And now I realize that that's all you need, <laughs> which I love. I'm just even looking like I have no gray here, I have gray hair there. <laughs> <laughs>